Hi, this is Chef Hyken. Let's get right to it with a story about a cab driver that delivers outstanding customer service. It was in Dallas, Texas, middle of the summer, 102 degrees, sweltering. And I had just finished a program just like this. I walked out of the convention center dressed like this, had a couple of heavy suitcases, and I was in luck because up was pulling the taxi cab. Out jumps the driver. He comes around to take my bags. Let me describe to you what he looked like. Cut off shorts, a sleeveless shirt, messed up hair. Hadn't shaven in maybe a week. For all I know, he hadn't showered in a week. I look at this man and I think to myself, this is not a moment of magic. This is a moment of misery. Why? As I look at him, I'm thinking, what does the inside of that taxi cab look like? I mean, look at him. You know it's dirty and grimy in there. You know there's no air conditioning. It's probably broken. I'm going to get into this moving sauna, and 25 minutes later, I will be drenched in sweat. The suit will be wrinkled for the day. And about the time I actually get out of the cab, a little spring's going to pop through the vinyl seat and rip my pants. So I look at him, and he looks at me, and he says in this deep Texan-accented voice, sounded nothing like the man that I was looking at, and I can't even get as low as he can go, but I'll try, he said, get in the cab. It's nice and cool inside the cab. I'll take care of the bags. And he smiled. It didn't look right. <laughs> sure didn't sound right. I look behind the cab to see if there's a ventriloquist. Well, I handed the gentleman my bags. I opened the door, and cool air hit me in the face. The air conditioners worked just fine. As a matter of fact, it was cold inside the cab. And as I got in, the cab was spotlessly clean. And sitting on the seat next to me were two newspapers, the local Dallas paper and a USA Today. And right in the middle where the hump is, there was a bucket with ice and two soft drinks. Couldn't believe it. I had to look back to make sure the guy was still putting the bags in the back of the cab. <laughs> Eventually, he gets into the front seat, picks up a dish of candy, turns around, offers me a piece of candy, and that's when I remembered what Mom always said. Don't ever take candy from strangers. <laughs> this was different. I took the candy, and I asked the guy, is this your cab, or are you, like, borrowing it for the day? <laughs> and he answered me. He said, and I won't get as low as he can go, he said, this is my cab and you make yourself at home. The newspapers are yours to take with you at the end of the trip, no extra charge. The sodas are yours to drink compliments of me. Have as much candy as you'd like, and by the way, it's a $22 flat rate, which is the same rate that any honest cab driver would charge you from downtown out to the airport. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. And I thought, wow, this guy's good. We get onto the highway, ask me a question no cab driver has ever asked me before. Are you in a hurry? Is it okay if I do the speed limit? Well, by that time, I was reading a newspaper, drinking a soda. I said, take your time. <laughs> then we start to talk to one another. He asked me questions like, where are you from? What do you do for a living? We start to converse. And then he asked me if I'd ever seen the famous fountain at Las Colinas. I said, I'm not sure. He said, and he described it to me. I said, you know, I've seen a picture. He said, then you've got to see it in person. And he started to get excited. It is right on the way to the airport. If you've got an extra few minutes, I would love to show you the fountain just to block off the highway. And I'm not going to charge any extra money. It's a $22 flat rate from downtown out to the airport. And it's not only the most beautiful fountain in the entire Dallas area, it may be the most beautiful fountain in the entire United States. Would you like to see the fountain? I said, show me the fountain. <laughs> I was getting excited. A mile or so later, he pulls off the highway, and there it is, the beautiful fountain. And he jumped out of the cab, and he pulled me out. He said, look at that. Is that the most beautiful fountain you've ever seen? I'm thinking, you're strange, man. It's just a fountain. But for those that aren't familiar with it, larger than life-size statues of horses galloping across the water, and where their hooves are hitting the water, it's splashing up. And I swear as you look at these horses, these statues, you can sense energy and motion. And if you didn't see the big buildings behind this mountain, you'd swear you were looking out on the prairie at horses running across the water. And he goes on and on about it. We're back in the cab. We're on our way back to the airport. And he asked me for a business card because he collects the cards of the people he works for. And we exchanged cards. And he said, the next time you come back to Dallas, you call me. You let me know what time, what flight, what airline. He says, I will be there. I won't charge you any extra money. It's a $22 flat rate but I will treat you like a limousine driver. I will park the cab outside, I will walk inside, and when you go over to get your bags, I will be standing there with open arms, ready to help you out. He said, don't worry, you'll recognize me. <laughs>
So we get to the airport, it's $22, he gets a huge tip. And I love telling this story because it started out to be what? A moment of misery, very good, but it quickly turned into a moment of magic. Because with the exception of the first impression, he not only managed the moments of truth along the way, he created some moments of magic as well. He had the, uh, the, the sodas, he had the newspapers, he had the candy and that little trip to see the fountain. I mean, I couldn't wait to see what we we're gonna do the next time I came back to Dallas. You know, shopping at the new mall. <laughs> Well, I can go on and on about Frank, but I'm going to tell you that's not the best part of the story. Now, as Paul Harvey would say, here is the rest of the story. Four days later, I'm in my office. I open up my mail, and there's a thank you note from my cab driver, Frank. Unbelievable. How often do we receive a thank you note from a cab driver? You know, every Christmas, I get a Christmas card from Frank and his wife. <laughs> 